who is Neith. First, let me show you a picture of her. share most of the same attributes but not the same history. Both Plato and Pythagoras, icons of Greek philosophy, stated that they and other great Greek philosophers had studied extensively in Egypt. Most had studied years at Egyptian schools to return to Greece as the first philosophers. After Socrates' death, Plato left for Egypt where he studied for a period of 13 years. His mentor was Seknufis, a priest in Egypt. It was how Plato learned the fable of Thoth and Amun, which he wrote down in Phaedrus. If the Greeks stated that they learned their philosophy from the Egyptians, why not simply accept that? The answer is clear. Whereas the ancient Greeks were completely comfortable with their inheritance of the Egyptian philosophy, modern scholars were not. As a result, they have had to jump through hoops to explain certain of Plato's writings. Greek myths take the evidence further. They clearly state that the first Greeks were Egyptians who had colonized the Greek Isles and mainland. Theodorus Siculus wrote that key crops originated from Egypt and founded Athens as a colony of the Egyptian town of Sais. The goddess Athena was, in truth, the Egyptian Neith, matron of the city of Sais. Martin Brunel adds that the Neith was written as HT in Egyptian. It was pronounced Ath or At. This means that even in Sais, the ancient goddess Neith was addressed as Athenate, with the Greeks later choosing to call the Nate a name for Neith rather than Athen or Athena. Such verbal gymnastics aside, it is known that the Greek writer Cherax of Pergamon in 200 AD wrote that the inhabitants of Saith referred to their town as Athenai. Now that we have that out of the way, let's take a brief look at each goddess and their known attributes and pictures. Athena is commonly known as the Greek goddess of wisdom, war, the arts, industry, justice, and skill. She was the favorite child of Zeus. She had sprung fully grown out of her father's head. Her mother was Metis, goddess of wisdom and Zeus's first wife. Also described as goddess of wisdom, of household arts and crafts, of spinning and weaving of textiles, she's mostly depicted with a helmet, sword, or spear. Neith is known as the ancient goddess of the beginning, the beyond, and the end. She is depicted in many ways and has varied functions. As a warrior or huntress, she is portrayed as a fierce deity, a human female wearing a red crown, occasionally holding or using the bow and arrow, and others a harpoon. As a deity, Neith is normally shown carrying the was, which is a scepter and symbol of rule and power, and the ankh, which is a symbol of life. It is likely that in Saïs, Neith was seen as a feminine counterpart of the father god, Tim. Like him, she was reputed to have self-generated and is generally believed that she embodied elements of both male and female in her nature. Neith's title included the Great Lady, the Mother Goddess, Lady of Heaven, and Queen of the Gods. She was also known as Mother of the Gods. Every year, a festival dedicated to Isis Neith was held in Saïs. My point to all of this. I made this song in an effort to spark curiosity in people so that they may inquire about this history and realize that all things that we have read or have been told may not necessarily be true. My goal is not to have you believe me. It is only an effort to encourage you to find something of interest, read, study, and learn. Never be satisfied with what you are told. Draw your own conclusions. Be a participant in your own destiny. Shape your own thoughts and ideas. With that, I hope you enjoy the rest of the song, Understanding Me.